Hi everybody, welcome back to Missy's Imaginings. I wanted to go ahead and put together the little black dress that I talked about in the last video. The pattern for the dress is already on the website, so you may have already printed that out and have tried it, but today I'm going to put that together. When I do the dress today, I'm going to be using um, a black, and it's like a bargain fabric, I'm not even sure what it is. It just has just a nice uh, texture to it, and like I say, I got it in a bargain bin and it wasn't really marked. I don't even remember if it was St. Vincent or Goodwill or whatever, but it's just a nice fabric. It has a nice drape to it. So I'm going to be using that for the dress pieces, for the dress, the skirt, and the bodice. Then I have the bodice pieces cut out again in just 100% uh, cotton. That's going to be the lining. So I have those cut out. And then on the dress portion, which is under the bust, the skirt portion, I'm going to be covering all that with a layer of chiffon. So that's what I'm doing on the dress today. And because it's black, obviously it's a little black dress, <laughs> it's really hard to see the thread and the seams because it's just all black. And even in, in good natural lighting, it's hard to see. So I'll kind of go through and explain my steps and uh, kind of hold it up. But there's a lot that's not going to show really well because it is black. And I would have done on another color, but I want a little black dress. That's why I made the pattern. <laughs> So I am going to be doing it in black. Now the other uh, thing I wanted to mention is I went ahead and copied the pattern and cut it out fresh just like you would. So what we get today is exactly what the pattern will give you. I'm not altering it in, in any way or, or changing anything as I go because I want to know how the pattern is going to work and how it's going to fit. So when I put this together, uh, the way it turns out will be exactly what will turn out if you sew it. Everything is quarter inch seams, which sometimes the seam lines aren't exactly a quarter inch from the edge, but it kind of gives you an idea of what the seam lines will look like. So I am going to sew with a quarter inch seam. Uh, my machine is all ready. All the threads changed over to black. I also changed over the serger to black, and I took out one of the needles, so I'm using single needle with a rolled edge um, on the hemline for the serger. I just wanted smaller seams on the serging part because I'm dealing with chiffon. So I don't want those real thick quarter inch seams on the chiffon. So I will be edging the fabric and the chiffon might be a little bit bigger or I might just trim it in a little bit so I maintain the seam allowance. But it won't look like quarter inch seams because I'm going to be trimming as I sew. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is when I'm doing a layered uh, look on the fabric. I'm going to be taking the back pieces, which I'll hold one up here, and when I'm doing doll clothing, and I, I think I've mentioned it as I sew, but it just in general so you know, the center back seam is this side, and when I'm doing doll clothing, I always serge the individual pieces of the back along the center back seam. The reason being is when I create the closure, I'm going to sew part way up the back and then the rest will turn in to give a finished look that will overlap for snaps or buttons or whatever. But then this seam will be open just because I need to be able to fold that over unless you actually want to snip here, which I usually don't do. So I'm going to be doing that on all the back pieces, both this piece and the chiffon. Now because I'm going to be overlaying this with chiffon, I will do these pieces and I'll do the chiffon pieces. And the chiffon will be hooked to the skirt, then I'll hook the skirt pieces to the bodice. So some of that work is going to be layered beforehand, but on the chiffon, I want it free falling from the bust line all the way down. So I'm not going to sew the chiffon to any of the pieces and then assemble them. I'm going to assemble the chiffon pieces, then I'm going to assemble the dress pieces. And the only place the chiffon will be hooked to the dress will be at the bust line 
and then along the back where it actually will overlap for a closure but then the entire skirt of chiffon will fall freely from this so I hope that makes sense and as we kind of get to those steps I'll mention that a little bit but that's just kind of what I like to do if I'm covering it because I don't want the back seam of the dress to have that overlay of chiffon all sewn into the seam. I want it to fall free from the other fabric. So anyway, I hope that makes sense and that's what I'm going to do. Generally, uh, we start out with taking the bodice pieces and sewing together at the shoulders. Because this is going to be lined, I'm going to do the shoulders of the bodice of the dress. Then I'll also do the shoulders of the lining. The small piece, let me find the, the little piece here. There it is. <laughs> there we go. On your dress, this little piece is sewn right here. So that creates the curve of the bust. So this is the underarm that continues from the underarm and that creates the curvature over the bust. Then the underarms will connect here. So I will be attaching these pieces also to the front um, just so that my front will be continuous. And uh, so that's where this little piece goes. The longer edge goes uh, to the, f the side of the bodice there. And then this is just creating the rest of the underarm and that will link to the back. So that's how that fits together. We'll move up the camera and go ahead and get started. As I mentioned, I'm going to be starting with the bodice pieces. So I have the back pieces, the front piece, which was cut on a fold. There we go. So that's the front piece. Then uh, the two side pieces that will be connected to the front. So I'll be connecting these to the front on each side. Then I'll be connecting the front to the back of the shoulders. I'm going to do that for the lying pieces as well as the actual dress pieces. Then I'm going to be sewing the front uh, or the pieces of the lining to the pieces of the actual bodice and I'm going to, let's see, once they're connected they'll look like this. I'm going to go ahead and sew uh, just the neckline, not the back, because I don't want to sew the back until the skirt's connected. So I'm going to be sewing around the neckline and I'm going to be sewing around the armholes with the right sides together. Then I'm going to flip it right side out and that will create the, the nice edges on the underarms and around the, the neck. So that's what I'm going to be doing as I put this together. Now I have the shoulders and the little side pieces sewn in. So I am waiting for my little iron to heat up so I can press those seams open before I connect those. And now I'm going to sew the pieces of the skirt part together. I have the back pieces which I will serge the edge here and then I will go ahead and sew those pieces together. It will look like, let's see here, we'll get one half done. <laughs> so we have the center piece, we'll lay that there, there we go, and then each of the front side pieces will have the little bust line sewn towards the center. So this one will go here, and then the back pieces will be sewn with the straight edge towards the outside because that's the center back. So it will look like this when they're all sewn together. So let's see, we'll move the camera a little bit. So there we go. So that's what that will look like. So I'm gonna sew all those pieces together um, on this fabric as well as the chiffon. And then I'm going to serge the edges so that it'll be nice and finished inside. So I'm not gonna show that part um, just because it's a lot of black and I'm going to be going back and forth from the serger but that's my next steps and I'll come back to the camera when that's all done and I'm ready to put the chiffon onto this fabric. Now that these edges are sewn I was going to let you know I did start sewing at the hemline 
because I wanted my little hemline to be even so that the chiffon will have a better chance of hanging correctly and looking nice and not being uneven. That means it ended up that the back pieces were a little bit long and so I ended up having like a tip sticking up here. What I'm going to do is simply uh, trim this even and even it out to the back so I'm just going to snip that off. So on your edges this was a little tall so I'll just kind of come down and even that out when I actually sew those together and then this was a little long so I'll just trim and even that out so it's not going to be a big problem but I wanted my hemline to hang nicely so that's why I started at the hem when I put those together and then I'll just kind of trim and even up the curvature of that top edge uh, after I get these surged and pressed and it lays nice and flat I'll pin them together and then trim to even that up when I actually put those pieces together. So I wanted to kind of film that and show you if you started the hemline this is what you're going to deal with uh, just so that you know that I had to deal with it too. The chiffon has now been uh, stitched with the serger so the edges are finished with a very small rolled edge hem and now I've pressed that and I'm going to be laying it with the right sides both facing up. So I've got my uh, base fabric here that's the actual fabric of the dress and then I have my chiffon overlay that will lay on top. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to baste the top edge together and do the trimming that I mentioned earlier so that has a nice edge on it. So that's what I'm going to do with these two pieces so that they will be ready to attach to the bodice. Now then when I actually sew the back together I'm going to be sewing the actual fabric together and then I'll get it out of the way then I'll sew the chiffon together so that that will hang freely. So that's the layers of the dress. Then I also have the bodice piece which I have the cotton fabric here. This is the wrong side and then the wrong side of the actual dress fabric. So what I'm going to do next is trim the neckline and the underline, underarm line, sorry that's where that's sewn, to a 1 8 uh, seam allowance so that it will be easier to go ahead and turn this fabric right side out. I did not sew the center back because I'm uh, going to have to sew the, the bodice to there, but once I get that uh, trimmed and turned right side out then I'll be putting the sides together uh, to sew the underarm seam like on the underarm side seam I guess I should say. So that's my next step is to go ahead and turn this right side out after I trim these uh, seam allowances here. So here's my little bodice. It's all right side out now. So this is what it'll look like when it's right side out. Now with the right sides together I'm going to go ahead and sew the underarm seams. So I'll go ahead and sew that seam and then the other one which will produce my actual little bodice and then it will be ready to sew the skirt part to the fabric that is the actual dress fabric. And then the lining I will press uh, a hem like a quarter inch hem up so that once the dress is put together I will hand stitch the lining down. So the next thing is the underarm seams and then I still need to put these together then I will be attaching the skirt to the actual dress fabric leaving the lining free. So that's going to be my next steps. So here is the dress with the skirt attached to the bodice with the chiffon overlay. Hopefully my hand will show there we can in the view of the camera. So here's the actual bodice attached and so I'm going to go ahead and now turn the lining uh, so that I have the right side of the bodice and the right side of the lining together and I'm going to sew the center back seam or the center back edge of the lining to the bodice so then I can in turn flip that 
right side out and then my uh, skirt will naturally turn in because it will be included in the turning of that seam. So I'm going to do that. That will finish off the back edge. Then I will be sewing, like I mentioned, the right sides together to close the back of the dress probably about an inch and a half from the edge of the bodice and the skirt. So I'll be sewing that high. Then I'll do the same with the chiffon and sew that together that high. And then that unattached uh, edge, I might slip stitch that together just so when it turns into overlap, it'll um, stay together and not gap. Then I'm going to need to, of course, hem the dress. And then I'm going to take a black silk ribbon that I have here. I'm going to grab my black silk ribbon. And I'm going to stitch this black silk ribbon over where the bodice meets the skirt. So I'm going to um, stitch that over the top, probably hand stitch that. And then there will be a small bow in the very front, just a little bow. So it'll just kind of finish that off and make it look real pretty and uh, give that edge a more defined appearance. So that's what I'm going to do with the ribbon once I get that put together. So I'll kind of go ahead and do those steps to finish this up and come back to the camera when the dress is done so that you'll be able to see it on the doll. Here is the finished dress. So I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. It has the, the yoke or upper bodice of just kind of that nice textured black fabric then the chiffon overlay over the skirt, which you wouldn't really need if you just wanted it, you know, to be one one type of fabric. And uh, But I like having the little chiffon layer. Then the satin ribbon adds another texture, which I like working with textures of uh, different kinds when I'm working with black. Otherwise, you just end up with this black mass, and it's hard to see. But by adding the ribbon... That's, this is a little bit of, it's a pretty fabric. It has a little bit of a, not rough, but it's not super, you know, satin smooth. So this has a little more of a textured look to it than a very shiny ribbon. And then, of course, the chiffon, it just gives more for your eye to look at. So I'm very pleased with how it turned out. We'll spin her around here. There we go, and it is a little bit longer in the in the back. I like to do that just so if I'm going to sit them in a chair or something that it's not hiking up so bad. But you can always just, you know, even that out if you want it to be one length all the way around. It wouldn't be a hard change to make. I have two snaps in the back, one where the fabrics meet and then one up at the neckline. It could maybe use a third snap right here, but I'm not going to worry about that. So that's what the back looks like. It, um, I stopped sewing. Let's see here. There we go. So you can see where I stopped sewing. So this is where the seam is. If you go ahead and make it, I would stop more down here. Give this a longer opening because it was kind of tough to get it up over her bum. And I did have to take off the little undies because just that extra thickness and the difference in the texture, um, made it, it wouldn't go on her. So I had to take those off so that it was just the slick resin. And then it slid up okay so I could get it on her all right. But um, just if you're making the dress, you might want more uh, room there to take the dress up onto the doll. So it's just a very straight, and it flares a little at the bottom. There's not a lot to it, but that's kind of what I wanted. Just the classic, just a little black dress. I do like the way the shoulders come in farther, so it's not way out on the edge of the shoulder. It comes in more of, oh, what do they call that, like racer lines, that it comes up on uh, the top of the shoulder, but has a higher neckline. That's just kind of the look that I wanted, and that's how it turned out. So this is what the dress looks like when it's finished. So if you uh, give it a shot, then that's what you're going to get. Uh, like I say, I didn't alter the pattern in any way. Uh, the only thing that I did when I was putting it together was, like I showed in the video, a couple of those spaces where the back pieces connect to the side where it kind of went up above the seam. I just trimmed that off. We can kind of lift her arm up here. So that way you see that the seam line now is very smooth as it goes 
around her back and under her arm. So it just, because that came up a little high, just trimmed that off and made it even. So it went together really well. I didn't have any problems. And uh, now you know what you'll have when you go ahead and put it together. So have fun. Happy sewing. The pattern, like I say, is on the website. If you go to Missy's Imaginings, it was on the last blog post. But when I make this video and post it, it will be on the previous post. <laughs> so if you go to the website, it will not be in the same post as the video here, but the previous one. It will also be on the uh, free stuff page where you can see the pieces and then also on the ready to print page where you can actually download that pattern and print it. Um, if you're new and you're not familiar with what we're doing here, uh, any of my tutorials where I have a pattern available, it's on my website, which is always linked down in the description. So you can just click on that link and it will take you to the blog. From the blog, you can read some clues, you can skim down through the entries, and there will be links where you can actually click on different patterns or different videos. Or you can use the menu to access specifically the free stuff page. That will give you a visual of all the patterns that are available, all my paper dolls that are available, all the coloring crafts that are available. Then when you decide what you want, you can use the menu again to maneuver over to the ready to print page where you will find everything in PDF format. So you simply click on it, that will open the file, then you can save it, download it, print it, whatever you want to do. Excuse me. So that's how we kind of work. It's all free. There's nothing that I charge for except on the, I think there's a page that says stuff to buy and um, you can go over there and see if there's anything you want to purchase. Most of those things are also going to be on eBay or they go back and forth. So if you see something you like, you can just let me know. Um, on my contact page, I think it's the contact page. There's um, an email that you can email me if you have any questions. But anyway, that's kind of how it works. It's all free. It's all fun so that you can just enjoy the hobby and have fun creating. So until next time, happy sewing. Bye.